Hello, and welcome back. For those of you joining us for the first time, my name is Jen Rhodes, and I'm the Assistant Program Director of our Textile Design Program at Thomas Jefferson University. I'm excited to welcome you today. It's our fourth installment for our first webinar series, This is Textile Design. Today's session, Straight to Paint, is a hands-on workshop presented by Julia Foster. Julie is a third year textile design student with plans to study abroad this academic year. She thinks of herself as a weaver with a strong interest in print design. Julia looks forward to exploring more design courses at Jefferson and continuing on to our graduate program. Grab your paint, paper and brushes and join Julia for some painting fun. Throughout today's presentation, I will be serving as the moderator for Q&A. Comments are always welcome in the live chat but please use the Q&A button to send your questions. Depending upon the nature of the question, I will share it with Julia as she works or reserve it for the Q&A portion of the webinar later. Please note all microphones will be muted today during our presentation. Julia, let's get painting. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen real quick and I'll talk about, so welcome. All right, so a bit about me, I'm Julia, and I'm a third year textile design major. I consider myself a weaver with an interest in print design, um, as well as home furnishing and basically anything hand woven I really enjoy. Um, so these are some of my sketchbook pages that I do, um, some watercolor motifs I have here that I use to turn into um, some print designs or anything in repeat that I can turn into a pattern or a larger scale project, like something on the right there. Um, and an example of that, I have some motifs on the right uh, that I turned into uh, pattern repeats and then some stuff that I just put on homeware and mapped onto pillows, blankets, things like that just to show what I can do with those prints. And then these are some of the tools I like to use when I'm doing watercolor painting. And you guys can use some of these today. So just some watercolor paint. Um, I have some mini gu uh, jelly gouache with me as well, so I might use that some brushes, um, water cup, I have um, two, one for the dirty brushes and then one for clean brushes, some paper towels, um, micron pens if you wanna do some drawing as well, pencil, um, and then just some salt or masking fluid if you guys wanna use that. And let's get started, okay? So um, I'm gonna lay out some prompts today and we'll just do like little sessions of those just to go through the workshop. So I think the first one will probably be about 10 minutes each. Um, the first one we can do, I was good thinking fruit. So if you guys wanna grab some of your supplies, if you have them with you, um, we can just kind of, I wanna leave kind of it open um, just for you guys to do what you want. Like, I don't know if you wanna do anything specific, you can just do any kind of fruit, maybe like vegetables or something. <laughs> just like a fun, relaxed time for everyone. And if you have any questions, um, I'll like leave the chat open too. Um, and you can send questions to Jen through the Q&A button. But we can all just hang out, chat, do some watercolor, something like that. Um, so let's get started. I'm probably just gonna, maybe I'll do like some kiwis or something. I've been eating kiwi. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, we can get use those or some chat questions. I normally start with just like a base coat um, of what I'm doing and I think watercolor like a lot of it's just about like building up um, the colors of some of um, Loving that pillow behind you is that one of your jackards. Um, this is, I didn't make this but my mom actually made this uh, pattern design on this pillow because <laughs> she did um, and then she was used in like, she did textile. So I think she made that maybe in the industry somewhere, maybe at Burlington, I'm not sure, but um, she made that. So I have it on my couch with me. I love that pillow. So it's kind of a little reminder of her. Um, super new to watercolor, any first time tips? Um, I kind of just keep everything like really expressive. I'm not like, you know, the best, but I just love, kind of just letting go and just kind of mixing the colors. Definitely like take your time. Um, you can use inspiration pictures. I find that really helpful. Like sometimes I'll look up some stuff on Pinterest and then just trying to like recreate some stuff. 
So I'll just start by like layering things down. Like I'll do like a light color. Hey, Julia. Hi. Do you mind showing a view of your paper? Oh yeah. Um, so I can like lift this up. So I'm just doing some <laughs> like light layouts right now. I'm going to do some kiwis, I think. So I just have some outline circles. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe I can tilt this down. I don't know if that will work though. I don't know if that will. But I'll lift it up here and there, if that's okay. So far, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, if you guys can't see or anything or you want to see what I'm doing or if you have specific questions, let me know. I'll lift it up. Okay, I didn't set my timer, so I'm doing that now. <laughs> I might go back in with some darker colors. Yeah, but I find like there's a lot of patience in watercolor, which I'm still learning how to do, but I had so much fun. Um, the other semester I had um, EJ for drawing and we did a lot of watercoloring that in that class and that was kind of like a really big boost to my like confidence with watercoloring. We took some like trips to places and I was able to really practice a lot, so it was fun. But I think this is like a good time for everyone to like, you know, get a break out of the week and just kind of sit down, relax. I feel like some people, you know, everyone's inside. It's kind of hard for me at least to like find time to get motivated and start doing stuff. We have another chat question. What's your favorite thing about using watercolors instead of acrylic paint? Um, I actually really do like acrylic paint. I think like it's so much fun to layer. I just like love layering acrylic paint, but um, I like watercolor color because I can just like easily grab my palette and I bring it literally everywhere with me. I have always have it in my bag. It's so easy just like bring that in a brush and you can fill up water with like anywhere and just kind of sit and just like you know paint. So I think it's a really accessible material and the palettes last so long like if you use them like right you know you can get a lot out of those colors so i think it's just like a really nice product to have and it's really simple and easy to use can you lift after applying each color yeah i'm still doing some some lines here but this is what we're working with i'm going to go back in with some brown in a second is there a way that Julie could point to the camera so we can watch as she creates? We can still hear her talk. If she does this, then we can see and learn more techniques. Yeah, so I'll point the camera down. I don't know if I can point the camera down, but I, I'll try to lift it as much as I can. I know I wish I like had like an overhead so you guys could see. Um, but yeah, just kind of be like as like creative and as expressive as you want to be, I think with this. It doesn't have to be like perfect. I think that's like the thing about watercolor too. So I'm gonna let it dry for a minute before I add um, some more colors. But that's what it's looking like. I just have a little sketchbook. If you can see. <laughs> I kind of just did some little circles on the page. Julia, do you use watercolor as a tool for inspiration for your textile work? Yeah, definitely. Um, I make a, I think I make a lot of my motifs um, or just like ideas and sketchbook work, working through the process. I always start with watercolor, I think. Um, maybe because that is just like an accessible material to me, especially like, you know, when you're at home, like now, like I feel like it's just easy to grab out and I'll definitely like use that as a way to just start doodling and I like sometimes just lay color down and then draw on top of it which I really like to do I like go back in with pen and just kind of make designs on top of it which was a lot of like the slides that you saw um, in the beginning those sketchbook pages I kind of just would lay some color down and see what I could get from it so I'm kind of like abstract and then just working from there I think it's like a really powerful tool to just get something out of it Okay, I'm going to go in with some um, brown around the edges. I'm just going to mix it up real quick. 
that's another thing too about watercolor. I mean, I guess it's just any paint, but mixing the colors I really like doing. Even though sometimes it's a little hard. Julia, while you paint, do you mind talking a little bit about your plans to study abroad and where you're going? Yeah. Um, so I'm supposed to go to Harriet Watt, which is in Scotland in Galashiels. And um, I was supposed to be taking, I think, some print courses. Um, and I was going to be going this fall, but it got pushed back. So hopefully, fingers crossed, I can go next semester, um, in the spring semester. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really excited to see how the equipment works over there and their teaching style and just meet some people and travel. So I'm really excited. Hopefully I can get to do that. I think it'll be a really good experience. I've heard so many people have such a good time. So I'm really excited. Oh, and the opportunity. Um, I've, my, actually my roommate um, last year I, knew, I always knew about the program going in, but she's the one who was definitely like, you gotta go, you gotta go, because she just came back from there. Um, so she was definitely hyping it up and like, she made it seem like such a good time. So I like definitely couldn't pass it up. Um, so I, it kind of just sealed the deal for me. <laughs> so shout out to Courtney if she's watching. <laughs> I tried saran wrap to get an unusual texture. I have actually, I don't have any with me. Um, but it's definitely something that I do love using. I use that a lot in um, the butterfly um, pictures that I had in my sketchbook pages in those slides. A lot of those I was using um, for that. I think that gives, it really does give such a cool texture. You gotta let dry and then you can peel it up and it gives really nice um, hues and detail in there. So if that's something you're looking for, you can definitely use that. And I have salt here as well. And also um, if you have like isopropyl alcohol, that works really well too. Um, I don't have any of that either with me right now, but that's also really nice to use. Yeah, there's so many options with watercolor, I feel like. And then with acrylic, you can just kind of get a lot of texture out of what you're painting. When students study abroad, are the classes they're taking in English, are there specific universities abroad that your school has partnerships with? If yes, which ones? Um, so I know mine specifically in Scotland, they do speak English. I know there, I think there are definitely some programs that we have. Maybe, um, if Marcia wants to step in, she might know a little bit more about that. Um, but I think there definitely are some programs. We do, we have like a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, this is Marcia and I'm in my painting smock just at <laughs> Um, so, uh, yes, we have relationships with, Harriet, specifically for textile design, with Harriet Watt in Galashiel, Scotland, which is in the Scottish Borders area, and with Massey University in Wellington, New Zealand. Um, but we do also have students studying abroad in Rome, in um, Japan. We had a student study abroad, abroad in Russia within the last year. But in all cases, the students are taking courses that are, that are taught in English. Um, so often, like when students study in, in Rome or in other cities in Italy, often they'll take a course in Italian because they're, they are there, but, but truly all of the courses that they're taking for the degree are, are taught in English. And I'm going to turn off my video and mute so I can go back to painting. Thank you, Marcia. Yeah, um, what do you do with, this? oh, there's a bunch of questions. Okay. Um, yeah, what do you do with the salt? So I'll lay down um, some color and then you can use it to create like a texture in the paint that whatever you're painting, it, it absorbs the color. So it kind of just leaves like spots of blank pigment, which you can then like paint over with a different color or leave it how it is. Um, so it works really well. I've seen people use it for a bunch of different things, like textures. Not almost anything. I used it a lot for like we did trees, and things like that. When we were painting and drawing class, so super fun. And then, what do you do with the alcohol? What effect does that create? So you can dip your um, brush in and then put it um, into the color while it's wet. Still, um, same thing for the salt. You would put it on while it's wet, um, and it just disperses like the pigment. So it kind of leaves like 
a white almost like streak. It makes, it looks so cool. I've seen people use that for like when they're painting fabric or things like that to kind of create lights and darks in what you're painting. It's really, really cool. We did, a, we did a whole, my other sketchbook from that class has a whole um, list of just everything we did with the different materials and just discovering different textures and things like that. So there's a lot of other materials. I think like, I, so many people use different things. Like one can use plastic bags, like instead of plastic wraps. So you can definitely like use other materials that you have lying around, like, um, just like upcycle some things in your work, which is really good. Do you mind holding up your sketchbook so we can see what you've added? Yes, and then I think we'll move on to like another prompt. So I just did some, I might add some color back into the green, but we might need to move on. So I just did some pen overlay, and some dots for the kiwi in the middle. So just a nice little light drawing to start off. Everyone can see. Lines. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Jen, you know what Zentangle is? I am not familiar with that. Becky. that. Yeah, Becky, do you know? Uh, yeah, Zentangle is sort of like a freeform drawing and then you work into the spaces that you have developed. Um, it's a lot of fun. We don't specifically use it. Sometimes we'll do it as a prompt early to get warmed up, but uh, I think it's a ton of fun and I encourage everyone to try it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely um, have done that before. Like just like going back to like laying color down um, and then just like drawing from abstract things in that, if that's kind of what you're talking about. I think that's a really good way to kind of get your brain moving. Um, have you ever, have you done any digital painting using Procreate on an iPad? I have used an iPad before, um, but I don't have one, but I would love to get one because they are really, really nice to use. Um, just drawing and being able to like, you know, kind of do everything you would do on paper, but it's digital and it works really, really well. Um, so let's move on to our next prompt. Um, I decided on animals, or you could do your pet if you want. Um, so any kind of animal you want. I'll set a timer now, we'll do another 10 minutes. Just like a quick. While you're setting that up, when you use salt, Julia, how long do you leave it there and what kind of salt do you like to use? Um, I think like, I guess like anything that's kind of like the kosher salt is probably best. Um, and I leave it on there till it's dry, like paint's totally dry. Um, if you don't, it'll kind of like, smudge the paint, it'll smear and it won't really get, you won't get the full effect. So you do have the same thing with the saran wrap, you have to leave it on there till it's mainly completely dry. That's what I do. I think you get the best effect out of it that way. So I'm just gonna start mixing up some. I might do like a penguin <laughs> for my animal. Something fun. I really like, uh, abstract watercolor, just kind of like messing around with it, pushing the paint around. And I also have a paper towel to like blot, but it's really good laying up the colors. I'm still working on that. I'm a little bit impatient sometimes when it comes to watercolor. I don't know if anyone can relate, but <laughs> I'm not as good at letting it dry so I can add it up, but sometimes I get it. I'll show you what I'm doing so far. I'm kind of just painting the body of the penguin. <laughs> and if you guys have anything that you really have a suggestion for, for prompts, if you really want to paint something, we can do that too. I have a few more. I don't know how much. I feel like we've got a good amount of time. Um, can you use a salt grinder? Um, get different size flakes, which is cool. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. I'll have to try that out. And can you talk about how you move from sketch to design and final completed design? Um, yeah, so sketch to design. So I think sketchup process is like one main thing that 
I definitely, we on our campus we use, and just like in general, it's really good to just kind of get the brain flowing. So I'll just kind of sketch a bunch of things out and then you can turn those into motifs. We scan them sometimes and then do those digitally. Um, and well, with like my sketchbook design, so it depends on what I'm making, but if I'm like making a pattern repeat, for example, like I'll scan my motifs and then put them all into like Illustrator and or you know Photoshop or some or InDesign or something like that. I normally use uh, Illustrator, and then um, I'll put them together in a way that I like for a pattern, and then I'll just put that into repeat. But I think a lot of it comes from like the development. So I'll start with like colors and mood board, and just kind of getting my concept down to really work through the colors and what you're trying to like convey through your final completed design. Iodized salt is great and playing with different particular styles is a lot of fun. I found this popcorn salt, which is super fine and creates these pretty tiny snow-like freckles. Yeah, that's, that's good too. The size totally depends on like the effect you're going for with the salt. I think it's a really good tool. Um, do you always start with the lightest color and end with the darkest? Do you need to let lighter colors dry before adding darker colors? Is there any tricks for correcting mistakes with watercolor? Um, I, it's totally, I guess it's like totally up to you. It totally depends what you're doing. Um, if you're like trying to build up um, colors, normally you do start with like the lightest color because if you start with the darkest, you can't really like go back in with the lightest unless you're using like, you know, a gouache or uh, acrylic or something like that, I suppose. But I normally start with the lightest, but if you're doing like wet on wet and you're blending colors or if you're doing like dry on wet, I mean, a wet on dry color, so you want to let things dry. Um, and correcting mistakes with watercolor. I mean, sometimes you can go back in with water and try to get it like back up because it, it sometimes before it does dry, you can um, maybe save it, but um, I'm not really sure on that one. So, I'm still How's your thing been looking so far? It's looking good. I'm gonna hang, I'm gonna hold it up for you guys. I'm just kind of going in circles now. I'm getting distracted by these questions. So I'm gonna do a head and some arms and some feet. Maybe a little bit of eyes. Just a very free-formed <laughs> penguin. I kind of want to let it dry a little bit before I go in with the feet. But you guys can also, um, like a lot of the time when I'm doing anything, I'll kind of just sketch it out. I'm not really doing that with this, but you can like sketch it out too if you don't feel comfortable go, like jumping straight in with the paint. But it's totally up to you. Julia, do you happen to have any of your sketchbooks on hand that you could show a little bit later? Um, I don't. Or, but we can refer people to your Insta account. So perhaps Becky could re-enter that into the chat. Yeah, sure. Yeah, my Instagram, I have definitely some of my sketchbook stuff. I have a lot of uh, stuff on there from a while ago, um, like in high school too. But um, my sketchbooks aren't, I don't think I could grab them offhand. Um, but I definitely, you guys could definitely check my Instagram out if you want to see some of my stuff on there. Now I'm just doing the head, you looking like that. <laughs> You mostly use 140 or 300 paper. Um, I know, like, I think, like, the only, the only thing I really know about paper, watercolor paper, is we use, like, there's, like, cold press and hot press, I think. And I think I use a lot of hot press paper. The sketchbook, I kind of just use whatever I have on hand unless I'm, like, really trying to, like, make a design. But I think hot press works well. I think you use either but um if you really want like nice finished watercolor a lot of people like tape it down um and you want to find stuff that's like specific for watercolor because like this is a multimedia sketchbook so it it i guess i do watercolor in here it kind of bends a little bit but it mostly stays fine i don't like tape it down or anything unless i'm trying to like give it to someone but yeah and oh, she said, I use a small piece of sponge to soak up color and correct mistakes. Yeah, so sponge, 
Um, Julia, while you're painting, can you talk a little bit about software you might use when you start to scan the image and put it into repeat and how you make the pattern with it? Yeah, um, so I'll go into Illustrator. Or well, first I'll like clean up my motifs in Photoshop. That's what I normally do. I'll like go through, put everything in, clean them up, I'll edit them. And then I'll put them into Illustrator and kind of just um, create the size that I want. And then I'll just place them around and like keep adding things, taking away. Um, and then I'll normally like lay the, do a layout of that and put it into repeat. And then sometimes I'll just save that as like, uh, PNG and then do the colors in the background. Most I've had with like creating prints has been in Becky's class for TDR the textile design research. I haven't taken um, any print courses yet so I'm not like totally in on the uh, software for repeat but I learned a lot in textile and research from for making patterns because I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> before I took that so Becky helped a lot with that one. Yeah. Yeah, let's see how much time we have. We have about two minutes left. Let me finish this up. I'm just gonna add little feet. Let me know what you guys are painting too, if you want to type in, if anyone's painting along. You guys can put in the chat what you're making. <laughs> and maybe I'll post some of these on my Instagram after as well. If you want to see what I did, if you can't really see through the camera. She's making horses. <laughs> That's nice. I want to see your guys stuff too. Maybe if you guys post somewhere be able to see we have the hashtag thread starts here so I can check that out yep she, Becky said tag at textile design at Jefferson hashtag straight to paint yep so we'll do that if you guys do post stuff with the hashtag straight to paint I'll check it out and see what you guys made Probably gonna run out of time. All right. Show you guys what I made. All right. It's our little penguin, little penguin guy. <laughs> All right. So next prompt. I'm gonna let him dry a little bit. Um, I was thinking some kind of plant or flowers. Maybe we could do, we might do a plant or a plant pot or some trees or something nature wise. Let me start the timer. <laughs> Thanks, Marcia. <laughs> hmm. Let me start with the plant pot. While you're painting your pot, do you have a favorite watercolor artist or a favorite artist in general? And if so, what do you admire about them? I have so many that I follow on Instagram. I'm like blanking on names. Let me think. Oh, there's one artist I know only this is coming off the top of my head. Her name's Julia dreams on Instagram just because my name's Julia too, but she does really amazing like patterns and uh, just illustrations that she uses on like uh, wallpapers and things like that. Um, and I find like a lot of inspiration, especially like with her colors that she chooses her aesthetic is just really great. Um, but yeah, that's probably what I can think of off the top of my head. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I went away for a little bit and I came back and all my plants are like not doing so great. So this is like a little tribute to them, I guess. <laughs> and 
And hopefully everyone's just kind of relaxing, having a nice break, painting break. I might use some of my salt now on this plant pot, actually. Let me get a little. Julia, do you think you have to be good at drawing to be a good textile designer? Um, no, I would say no. Um, you know, there's so many people that have so many different talents, and I feel like it, you can really work it into, like, anything. And, you know, it takes, everything takes time, you know. I don't think I'm fabulous at everything. So I think just building up your skills and really working and like just seeing your progress, just you work towards what you want to do and like eventually you get better and better and better. So I don't think you have to be like a great drawer or anything like that, especially textile design. There's so many things, you know, you can do. What artistic strengths do you think make for a good textile designer? I guess just being able to like work with like different materials and like listening to feedback and stepping out of like your comfort zone and trying different things. I think that's like a good strength to have and you know things build from there so you're learning more and more and and everything else comes with that, I think, so. All right, I'm gonna pull this up for you guys. I have some salt on the paint there. I just did a little pot up top and I'm probably gonna do like a little hanging plant there. We have about six minutes left for this one. And again, I'm gonna like build up the layers of the leaves. So I'll start with some like light colors. What's your favorite part about being a textile designer? Mm. Um, I have a lot. I mean, I love just like anything hands-on. I've always been just like a hands-on person, you know, anything creative that I can do I love like I say I'm a I like weaving but honestly I love everything like I like knitting too and I like making prints and designs and things like that so but also just like the environment of our major like it's just so everyone's so great and nice and it's just a really nice space and I feel comfortable and creative whenever I like see everyone or even just like knowing everyone's there and seeing everyone's posts especially during these times, like how creative everyone got. It's really inspiring. And, you know, even just like Marsha and Natalie and Jess who were talking this past week, like it really kind of gave me a little bit of boost in motivation just to like, got me excited to start like, you know, when we go for when we go back um, on campus or just starting classes again, just to like get back in the flow of things. So I really like that about, I guess, being a textile designer, but more art wise, just, you know, getting to create things and being hands-on, it's like my favorite thing. Just gonna add in some leaves. Yes. <laughs> what are you guys painting? You're painting along. Do you feel like all of your pieces have a common thread? Personality? Does your, do you purposefully try to make each piece unique? Um, I feel like I try to switch up my like aesthetic, but I feel like I always end up coming back to like some similar stuff or like the similar ways, like my process kind of stays similar, but I do try to like make everything, I guess, unique or a collection 
like I'll try to make things in it stick out. Um, I did like think when I was coming into like the major that I had to like make everything kind of like one collective collection eventually over time. But I feel like that's what it's good to have diversity like in your portfolio. So showing that you can do different things in different ways and is like important. So don't get too stuck on doing things in certain ways, I'd say. That helps your question. That's a long. Um, oh, what is the average starting salary for textile designers? What is the average salary after 10 or so years in the field these days? Um, I'm not really sure on how to answer that. Um, if anyone wants to pop in, Marcia, if you want to pop in. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll put, put down my paintbrush and pop in. Um, <laughs> so, so the question is one that ha is very challenging to answer because the starting salary depends a lot on the size of the company and the location of the company. So if you're a starting textile designer in New York City versus a starting textile designer in North Carolina, you may have very different responsibilities for very different size companies that have very different starting salaries. Um, what I would say is that on, our, on the university website, if you go into career services, you can actually access a, um, a report of students first jobs and and what they're starting what their aggregate starting salaries are by by discipline um, I'm not sure to the level of I haven't looked at it honestly in the last couple of years so I think you can get to the level of specificity of location as well um, so it depends on if you're coming out with an undergraduate degree or a graduate degree and the where you're going to be in 10 years, again, massive question. So it's, it's not a one size fits all kind of answer. So I'm going to skirt around the question that way. Um, in terms of what the market is like, up until the pandemic, the market's been quite good. Um, in the current economy, none of us knows. You know, none of us knows what's going to happen and how quickly things will rebound. But we are hopeful that things will rebound quickly for all of our students. Um, so I guess I could keep going, but I'm going to leave it at that. I think we probably want to hear Julia more than we want to hear me. I think we're almost wrapping up now on this one. And we got a few seconds left. Try to add a little bit more detail and I'll show this to you guys. Sorry, I haven't been keeping up showing my <laughs> sketchbook. Do you have any favorite brands of paper and paints? Um, I like using, I guess my paints, I, this is the palette I'm using right now. I love this so much. I've had it for a little, I think a little over, mm, maybe like, yeah, a little over a year, I think. Um, this is the transparent watercolors. Um, these guys, they work really well. And then I have the, the squash set here. I can open this up for you guys if you want to see. Um, Himini, I don't know if I'm saying the right gouache. It's like a jelly gouache. I kind of like these. Um, I don't have that much experience with um, just like regular gouache. So I don't know if I'm fit to give a full comparison, but they work really well um, getting the pigment and you can like get them up to a paint, point of like um, watercolor too. So it kind of you can water them down, but I think they work well. But I definitely reach for this watercolor palette the most. Um, and then as for like my other tools, um, like fiber castell pens or micron pens, I really like. Um, and then I have the Muji pens too, which I really like. These guys are really good. All right, I'm using the same watercolor paints. Yeah, <laughs> they're good. Um, okay, next. Time, do we have time for one more? Or are we like closing them now? We are at 4.45. So we typically kind of wind down around this point and start Q and A. We have two questions in the, in the queue and more usually come in after that. So it's up to you. What do you think? Should we start with the questions? Um, yeah, we can start with questions if you guys have. All right. So our first question that's been waiting in the wings for a while, which grad program are you planning to attend? Uh, 
Um, so, yeah, I was planning on going into the five-year program for the textile design graduate program. So right after my senior year, I would be, um, well, working to in my senior year through to one more year of grad school. Um, does that answer that question? <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. Um, and to answer the next question, this question is directed to Marsha and I. All of our webinars are being recorded. Uh, you can find them on our alumni events page, but we will also be publishing them on our social media accounts in the future. Becky can elaborate on that a little better than I can, but they are out there. Do we have any more questions for Julia? Wow, no questions. Well, since we don't have any questions, but we still have plenty of time left, do you want to do a quick, one quick challenge? Yeah, let's do, let's do one more. Yeah, sure. And if any come in during that, we can answer them. Ah, can you show everything you've created today? Yes, I can. Everything's in it. Okay, so the kiwis are looking a little lackluster, but I got a little distracted in the time frame. <laughs> um, this is my little penguin, so this is the animal. I was going to paint my cat, but I didn't do that. I wanted to pull a picture of her, but. And then. Dead. My salt's still on there, but it's all right. And I didn't really. Yeah, and you guys will have to post too. Um, we'll often be sketchy each week. Ooh. Hmm. More recently, hasn't been as much, I can say, but um, I definitely was trying to for a bit do it every day. Um, I think that's super helpful and just like getting your skills to you know grow and getting better, but I'm definitely gonna, this week I've been, you know, a little more motivated, I'd say, because of this webinar, so hopefully I'll keep going. What project are you most proud of since coming to Philadelphia University? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think like everything I've done, I, I've done a lot of different things so far, because I've taken um, a knit course, Megan, and then Knit Tech with Becky. And Leave Studio was probably like my favorite because I really like weaving. But I really like my hand woven collections, I'd say. But my favorite thing that I've made was probably my massive like drawing I did in my drawing class. I really like that. I painted, like, did like a pastel of a tea bag. I think it was in my slides. Um, that I just found that was like so fun because I just got to go in there and like find zen, my zen spot and just kind of like draw, but I really do like my open collections as well. How can someone start a textiles project from home? Ooh. Oh man, our, you'd have to look at our page too. So many people have done so many things. People have used cardboard to make looms. You can definitely DIY a bunch of stuff. Um, but I think like the easiest thing that I could do offhand would be like make a little mini loom off of, out of cardboard and you can just make your own little like hand woven piece if you guys have some yarn but um i don't know i think there's so many ways people have done so many cool things so you definitely have to check out the instagram to see those all right well we still have 10 minutes left if there are any questions Feel free to share them. You want me to do yeah. one more? How about if you do a quick five minute prompt? Yeah. Do you guys want to do like, um, let's do like a like bug or something, like an insect? I'm thinking like a butterfly or like a dragonfly or something. So while you're thinking about your bug, Julia, what class <laughs> are you excited to take in the fall semester? Ooh, um, I'm supposed to take jack art. I'm really, really excited for that. Um, that's probably what I'm most excited for. I will start the timer if you guys want to get going on that because we only got a little bit of time left. I might lay down some color and then do some pen on top of this one.
think I'm going to start with the dragonfly. Julia, do you see yourself working for a company or would you like to be an independent designer? Mm. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I've been thinking about that a lot. I, I, I would like to work for a company, definitely. Um, I found like, I'm, I'm interested in home furnishing, but also I know like, um, like kids wear, I think is really cool. Like I know Stella McCartney does some like really, like her kids line is like so cool. And just like the print she has on there like really interests me. So I think like stuff like that, but also like if I could do like commission pieces as well, like on the side, like some tapestries or something like that, that'd be cool. We have a request. Uh, do you happen to have a moment or two after you finish with your insect? to possibly show the slides from the beginning to just show the first few pages of uh, more of your sketchbook work since you don't have one with you. Yeah, sure. Um, do you want me to pull it up now or? Up to you. Yeah, I'll let this, I'll lay this down and then I'll pull it up. So, um, these are some of the, if I can see, just watercolors that I did, just like making motifs. Um, that would turn later into like patterns. So I used like these butterflies and this is what I used saran wrap for right there on the right, top right. Um, I laid saran wrap and I was kind of trying to use that into a background piece. And this was, this is one of my favorite sketchbook pages I did. It's just paint, acrylic paint in the background. And then I dipped rubber bands in like India ink and I put them on there and used like my thumbprint. I really like that. Oh, and this was the tea bag I did on the side there. <laughs> um, yeah, so I turned like these motifs into like sounds like this or just like some kind of repeat, um, some strawberries there, and then just some stuff that I mapped. So like even just like simple little like background like watercolor dots, you know, just minimal stuff that you can just turn into. This was actually paper that I cut um, and then mapped it onto the pillow here but these are some sketchbook pages that I have here. I definitely have a lot more on my Instagram. If you guys want to check that out, there's my Instagram, it's just julia.textiles, so. All right, I think we only got. Show us your insect, what do you have? Yeah, we're still going. I just laid down one color. It's my dragonfly. I'm gonna lay some, a little more color down and then I'll probably go and do some and designs or something, something fun. Oh, I also have like, I don't know if I said this in the beginning, but a palette um, is good to have too for like mixing colors down. So I've been using that on the side. Yeah. Hopefully this was a nice little relaxing time for everyone who joined in thank you for coming <laughs> what's your favorite thing to paint like in terms of subject matter botanical things from nature so on and so forth um i'm definitely like an abstract person like i think just like anything i have in front of me or like if i'm just outside and i just start laying color down i'll just like i don't really have any go-to's i don't think I do like painting uh, plants though, I guess. <laughs> That's a reoccurrence. But yeah, kind of anything I have in front of me, I kind of just abstract and go with it. What yeah. course or project has stretched your abilities the most as a textile designer? Well, that's a good question. Um, hmm. Knitting definitely was hard. <laughs> For me um but it was so fun and i gained like i learned so much in knit tech like with the programs too using like photoshop and stuff i think every class you kind of just kind of develop more skills it's a challenge but it turns into something fun that you can end up using like all the time um so definitely like that and um anything using like illustrator or photoshop when i didn't really know how to use them i kind of learned from those they were a challenge, but I'm still working on it, but getting better. <laughs> I 
Alright, some more lines down. I'll show you guys. I painted another one down there. I don't really know what that is, but it's a bug. <laughs> So everyone, as we wind down, do you have any final questions or comments for Julia? Julia, do you have any final thoughts or comments for the group? Um, yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Like I hope everyone's been enjoying this week's webinar series um, and hopefully everyone had a nice relaxed moment in their day to you know, compete and thanks for asking questions. And hopefully you guys post to the hashtag straight to paint. Thank you, Becky, for that. I wanna see your stuff. So we have two more that just popped in. Great. So I'm going to ask, we have an 11-year-old asking this question. At what age did you start painting? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> probably when I was able to hold a paintbrush. I was always, you know, drawing something. Um, but I guess I like, started taking it seriously in like my senior year of high school, actually. You know, I, I kind of was just taking my art classes and um, I found out, I was like, wow, I actually like, really like doing this. And then I went from there. When creating a design, is there any focus on a specific application or do you consider that to be a secondary effort after the design is completed? That's a good one. Oh, that is a good question. I think, um, in what I've done so far, a lot of my stuff, I just choose what I would apply it to afterwards, like what I be think it would best fit for. But I think I've definitely done some stuff where I was like, I could definitely use this for this, especially when like hand weaving, I feel like you have like a more like narrow approach to what your things could go towards. So, yeah. All right. Thank you, Julia, for a great presentation today. We're getting a lot of comments about how much fun this was. Uh, especially for people who haven't played with watercolor in quite some time. So if there aren't any other last minute questions, I think we'll wrap it up for the day. Thank you for having me. This was really fun. <laughs> thank you for being here with us. We're really excited that you did. And thank you to the rest of you for joining us today. We hope to see you again tomorrow at four for our fifth and final installment in our webinar series. This is Textile Design in Action with one of our alums, Angela Leonard. As always, the best way to learn more about us is to visit us, but you just can't come to campus right now. So please follow us on social media at Textile Design at Jefferson. By following our social media accounts, you'll get to learn a lot more about our upcoming events and see all of our student work as we post it. We'll also have links to the sessions of our webinar that you may have missed. You can also email me directly at jen.roads at jefferson.edu. Thanks again for watching and have a great evening.